Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our introduction to t-tests. In our last segment, we looked at one sample t-tests where we compared a sample to a population on an interval or ratio variable. Let's say, for example, we wanted to see if our class of students was getting a different amount of sleep than Americans in general. In this kind of t-test, a two sample t-test or independent samples, we want to see if there's differences between two groups on an outcome. We have a nominal variable for our independent variable with the groups, two levels, and a continuous variable that's interval or ratio for our dependent variable. If we had an ordinal outcome, we'd need a non-parametric test, which you'll learn about in some of your upper level stats class. So with two samples, think T for two and two for T, right? Like you and your niece at a tea party, there's two people in the room. Well, if you don't count the stuffed animals and dollies sitting around. So you want to see if those two groups are same or different on an outcome. Now, in SPSS, we would do this by going to Analyze, Compare Means, and Independent Samples. Again, our last segment looked at a one-sample t-test, and next we'll look at paired samples. But for today, we're looking at differences between two groups on a continuous outcome. In our particular example, we're going to look at differences between males and females, or potential differences, in the temperature at which they like to keep their houses. So to, we would start by setting up our grouping variable. Again, take sex and put it in here. This is our independent variable with two levels. And we need to define for SPSS which two groups we want. In our particular data set, males are one and females are two. Maybe in your data, data set, females are first and males are second. These numbers don't mean better or first in priority. It's just a number to represent a group. If you had transgender people or intersex people, maybe they would be group number three. And you could look at differences between transgender people and males or transgender and females. So because SPSS realizes or is programmed to realize that you might have more groups than that in your variable, it asks you to specify which two groups you want. After you've done that, click continue. And then you need to put your dependent variable up here as the test variable. So if it's over here in our list, highlight it, click it in, and you're telling SPSS we want to see if there are gender differences on temperature. Our null hypothesis in this case would be that there is no difference. Males and females like the same temperature. And our research hypothesis or alternate hypothesis is that there is a difference. Males and females might be different in the temperature that they like to keep their houses. This is a two-tailed test because we're looking at um, a place where one group, males, could like higher temperatures or females could like higher temperatures. If you predicted a specific direction, you're just convinced that females like it warmer because they always tend to have cold fingers and hands and so they're going to want a warmer house. You would need to do a one-tailed test. And after we've run this in SPSS, I'll show you how you could do that. But we're going to start here again with a two-tailed test differences, potential differences in males and females on temperature. We're not going to worry about options or bootstrap. Those are for more complicated things than you need. And we're going to click OK. Now, when you look at your t-test, and let me get it open here. Oh, that's not the one I want. We want this one. When you look at the outcomes for your t-test, We've got first our descriptive information, and you need to report this in a manuscript as well. The sample size for each group, 52 males, 173 females. The mean for each group, here's 71 for males, 70 for females. And the standard deviation for each group, 4.5 for males, 3.9 for females. So somewhere in your write-up, Maybe in a table, maybe in the text, you'll need to provide this descriptive information. We're not worried about reporting the standard error of the mean, although this is built into the formula in the same way it was when we did z-tests. These are the things here that you need to report. Now, with an independent samples t-test, we get lots of numbers down here in our output for SPSS. For a beginner level stats class, we're not worried about this right side of the distribution we need to understand this left side and the numbers that it gives us. The first part is a Levine's test. 
A Levine test checks one of the three assumptions of independent samples t-test. So you might remember that independent samples t-test have three assumptions. One, random sampling, right? Everybody had an equal chance of being in our data. We didn't grab just the tall people or just the people in our sorority or all of our friends, right? We had a good sample that might represent the population. Second, that the people in these groups are independent. We don't have someone claiming to be both male or female so that their data is showing up in both groups. They can only be in one group or the other. And third, the assumption of normality, that the data distribution, the histogram for each of these groups is normally distributed. What the Levine's test does is look and make sure that the hills, right, that normal distribution for each group, one for males, one for females, are similar shapes. This is about the variance or variability of the scores. If the Levine's test is non-significant, look here, right, it means that both of those groups have a pretty normal distribution and they're similar shapes. So if you like the metaphor, we are comparing maybe grapefruits to oranges, right? Similar shapes, they're both citrus, they might be a little bit different, but they kind of resemble each other. If this Levine's test is significant, if this probability value is really small, what it means is that the shapes of those two groups' data are different. Maybe one of them is normal and one of them is tall and spiky. Maybe one of them skewed and one of them is lumpy bumpy, right? Lumpy bumpy in data is always pretty bad or complicated. So that Levine's test, again, will have a small probability if the shapes are not equal. Maybe it looks like we're comparing more apples to grapefruits instead of two kinds of citrus. Again, if you're a metaphor person, that might help. So if a Levine's test is not significant, that means the shapes are about the same and both normal. We've met our assumptions and we can use these upper level values here for the T, the degrees of freedom, and the significance. If we had different shapes, if the significance was small, we would need to drop down to this lower set of numbers that says, hey, those two things aren't shaped like each other, but we can use a different math formula to still get a T value, okay? So like Pearson and Spearman, this one's more picky. The assumptions have to be met. Shapes are the same. And this is more like Spearman, the shapes aren't the same, but we'll work it out anyway. Right. Here is the stuff you need to report for inf the inferential part. We need to report the actual T value that we get for the test. We need to report the degrees of freedom. And for a two sample T test, we take the total sample size. Here it's 225 and subtract two because there's one person in each of the groups that can't differ. Remember, degrees of freedom is the number of scores that can change, and we'd still come up with the outcome. Like when you walk into the classroom and you say, pick a seat, the first person in gets lots of choices. The last person in gets stuck with the last open seat, so they don't have any freedom. So again, one person in each group does not have freedom. One, two, we subtract two from the sample size. So 225 minus two is 223. And then this is our significance or probability. Remember that we usually set in psychology an alpha level of 0.05. That's a 5% chance um, of finding something unusual or unlikely. And this tells us then what our probability was for the T value we calculated. If this is smaller than our alpha level, we found something that seems to be meaningful. It looks like a difference exists. If this value is above our alpha level, 0.05, it means there's no difference, or at least not a meaningful one, between the two groups. So this small t value and large probability level, p, suggests there's not really a difference between males and females on temperature. If we had a large t value, positive or negative, right, whether, again, further away from zero is more meaningful, and if this was a small probability level, that would tell us that these groups are meaningfully different. It's significant enough that we don't see that every day. In this particular case, again, our Levine's test is non-significant. We seem to have two nice equal shapes. We're going to look at this top level. We've got a small t and a large probability. So we would fail to reject our null hypothesis. It doesn't look like a significant difference exists between males and females on temperature.